Hi, Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. I enjoyed the Utah Wood Turning Symposium and I want to try and learn and reproduce many of the techniques or projects that I saw there. One of the early ones that I saw was by Janice Ferber, where she made necklaces or other pieces. These can be either for a necklace or a brooch or a pin. And her technique was especially interesting because the indentations and the profiles that she put on here were not the same parallel axis as the rest of the turning. She tilted them just a little bit. Now, you would think that that requires an expensive jig, but she just uses a piece of wood turned, uh, turned round, dovetail tenon on the back so that you can hold it in a chuck, and then at a chop saw, cutting it off at a certain degree. This one, 20. This one, 10. She also had a 5 and a 15, probably a 25, I don't know, but uh, I just made a 10 and a 20 for my purposes today, and I did quite a few with the help of my wife and my daughter. Here's one, and we tried to keep the smiles the right way. Another one with other grooves. This one was out of multiple woods. This one, well, I think it was a faux pas, but it turned out okay anyway in the end. So let's make these bro uh, pendants, pins, or brooches. Actually, the first task for this project was to walk out into the backyard and find a suitable chunk of wood. Several of these brooches were for my daughter to give away. She selected a chunk of apple. She has never turned before, so this was an opportunity to have her do some of the turning. I mounted the wood between centers and coached her to round it off. She did great for a beginning turner. Then I cut the tenons on both ends of the apple timber. Then, because I did not have any chucks like Linda Ferber's, I had to turn a ch chunk of cedar just like she did and cut tenons on both ends just like the apple. Then I had to make the side trip to the chop saw. I like my hands. I did not want to risk holding the round cedar with my hands, so I clamped it with an old C-clamp to keep my hands intact. The first cut was at a 20 degree angle, then I changed to, to a 10 degree setting and trimmed the, a little more wood off the end. Voila! Two chucks ready in less than 10 minutes. Thank you, Linda Ferber. Back to the apple. The cylinder happened to be just slightly smaller than my Vicmark chuck that I use on my Powermatic. Rather than fuss around too much, I switched over to my mini lathe. The apprentice chuck for that lathe is just a little bit smaller. This worked out well as we made 10 brooches. We used the mini lathe to prepare the discs and left the larger chuck mounted on the large lathe to swap between the angle chucks. For each disc, I smoothed off the backside before parting off about one quarter inch disc. Then, after smoothing the remaining long piece, I used hot melt glue to fasten the disc back onto the longer piece of apple. I would have preferred double stick tape and have two rolls somewhere in some box in the shop area. So rather than search for the tape, I used hot melt glue. Then I trued, shaped, and sanded the front side of the disc before moving them over to the larger lathe. However, for two brooches designed by my granddaughters, I did not tilt the axis for the front decorations. 
Instead, I simply shifted the disc to a new parallel axis and re-glued the disc on, all on the small lathe. Now over to the large lathe with the tilt chucks. Actually, in Linda's session, we decided that we were shifting to a skewed axis, so they probably should be called skew axis chucks. Again, no double stick tape in sight, so I used hot melt glue. After guessing where the chuck needed to be on the surface of the skew axis chuck, I glued it on. By the way, don't use hot melt glue unless you have to. Double stick tape is the better route. Then I turned the button on the face of the disc. This is much like a natural edge bowl, but in miniature. A lot of cutting air to get started. This always has a high potential for a stunning spiral catch. Then some careful sanding before applying shellac. After wood burning my signature, I finished the backside and buffed each disc. Finally, I glued a combo finding onto the back so the disc could be both a pinned brooch or a necklace pendant. I like the combo brooches and pendants. I'll keep these skew axis chucks and add additional chucks for 5 and 15 degrees. The apple wood is still slightly green, so the brooches may acquire more character when they dry. I like this process and plan to do more in the future. We'll see you again next week. Please leave your comments. If you can find it, please click the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.